Welcome to another edition of the Peel Guys. Uh, oh, we yeah. are on the air now. Yeah, Thank we're on the air. For that. <laughs> uh, sorry How's that we were forced to take a week off. Ooh, that rain man. sucked every bit of it. Yeah, uh, and I, we made the call that it was just probably best for us not to do it. Um, because originally we were going to do it on Monday. Our schedule sucked. We both had to work overnights. Um, or stupid early in the morning. Yeah, and then uh, mm. we. We're going to do it on Thursday, and then obviously Amelda decided she wanted to be a bitch um, and rain everywhere. So Yeah, that was that was fun. Hopefully uh, everybody fared well uh, during that and yes. after that, and hopefully no major damage to, to anybody's property or themselves uh, happened. So, yeah. But we are here now. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go a little bit longer, obviously, to discuss uh, three matches. God. Man, three three matches happened in a two week time span. Yeah, so it's just you had a win, a loss, and another win, um, mm. which the latest, the Orlando one, that was. Where was that second half team the entire year? Man, but that's the thing though is like, uh, not to, I guess I don't want to get too into it just yet, but yeah, but getting a bit. Kind of under Davey Arnold, it's kind of like almost the complete opposite of what Wilmer Cabrera's team was. It's just he had a first half team. Now we have a second half team, which I'd yeah. much rather have a second half team coming out. And yeah. I like comeback wins like that. And um, Christian Ramirez, team. <laughs> so that yeah, so be something with us. Uh, we've got that match to talk about. We'll briefly talk about the the Minnesota match because we didn't get a chance to talk about it. Uh, then we will. Briefly cover the Vancouver match, which was this the same same old story on the road in Vancouver. We can't catch a break. Mm. Uh, then we'll obviously we'll we'll go a little bit more in depth. The on officiating the, was god awful too. I that was bad. Um, then we'll go a little bit more in depth on the uh, on the Orlando match. Talk about some other things going around in MLS. And uh, I'm gonna throw this out there now. I got a little rant. Uh, not not a bad one, but. The reason why I also feel that I don't care what anybody says. Yes, the talent may not be there, but from a fan side of things, I feel that MLS is the best league in the world. Maybe not talent-wise, because it's not. But it's but, a, but it's a competitive. From week in, week out. I mean, how many times has the standings changed in the last, like, three weeks? I mean, you have teams that were well into the playoff yeah. playoff race. Now they're on the outside looking in. That's the best part. That's the that's the beauty about for you know MLS for us is how competitive it is. Uh, you know, just in the regular season. Obviously, even then, if you don't win the regular season, you still have playoffs. Yeah. Afterwards, you know, you can't really say a lot for you know you can't really say that for Europe. Um, not to knock Europe because obviously that's where the talent is. But yeah. um, uh, it, it's like it's like I say. I, I I would I would much rather be a. You know, obviously from Houston, I would much rather be a Dynamo fan still with a chance. We still slats, you know, mathematically have a chance to get in the playoffs. Then I would, I would Cincinnati. rather, yeah, yeah <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a Everton fan, you know, yeah, because all yeah. I'm going to do is just sit in the middle of the pack, maybe one year. And we'll see, that's the thing. Like La Liga, Europa. La Liga is a little different this year because Barcelona and Real Madrid aren't playing the greatest. But, um, you know, they're going to win the league. One of those two teams is going to win La Liga every year. Bayern Munich is – Bruce Dortmund's going to lead the pack all the way up until, like, the last four weeks of the season, and Bayern Munich's going to steal it away like they do every year. Um, How many seasons is, is it consecutive now for Bayern Munich? It's, like, it's just like 20. Un- Not really. No, but, but it, it's a pretty good amount. Like um, I, I hadn't kept up with it in, in a while because of that reason. Yeah. You know? uh, then you've got – I mean, EPL, it's the same five teams that finished in the top five. You might, as an outlier, have one team like Leicester, you know, take it take it deep. But it's not – you don't have that when I'm us. Look at Seattle. They go a couple years ago. They're garbage all throughout the season. Get hot in the last month and a half, two months. Make the playoffs, win the cup. You know? It's not MLS 1.0 anymore where you have the LA Galaxy winning it every year. Hell, the LA Galaxy two weeks ago were out of the playoff race. They didn't win it. Every, that was DC United that won it in every year for MLS Oh, yeah. 1. Okay, Trust MLS 2.0. I, I, I was with the 2.0. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, that was um, fun watching the Galaxy but help us. if you can't see past the talent part and just see how close this league is 
when it comes to competitiveness, then you're paying attention for the wrong reasons. I mean, it's fun, you know. It makes me, uh, you know, I'm excluding this year, but it makes me want to root for my home team. Yep. Knowing that, like, okay, we have a shot to, uh, you know, actually do some some damage in the league and stuff, and um, be competitive and, you know, not be media. It's kind of going against I mean, hell, what we've kind look, of been this year for the past look, couple years. But. New England Revolution, we're the laughing stock of the league for the last four or five years. They're in the thick of a playoff yeah. race. Yep. They've gone on a tear, man. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's yep. hate on it all you want, but that's on you. But Did someone hurt over. you? Did someone no. hate on it? Huh? Hate on no. Well, because, I mean, there's trolls out there on, on you know, yeah. social media. Not, the time, not personally, but, but it's you know. one of those things that I've been wanting to get out there. Like, it's watch it. Yeah, but the only problem, too, though, is uh, I guess if you want to look at the bigger scheme of it, the international stage isn't really there for us. No. Um, as far as, like, competing outside of MLS. It's just just MLS. The way MLS will get better, and it starts locally, you've got to win the Champions League, and you've got to get to the FIFA World or Club World Cup. Yeah. Get your name out yeah. there. Go over to Europe. Beat, I mean, beat, it, it, beat a big team. You don't have to win it. Beat a big team in that tournament just once, even if you bow out. I mean, that could happen. You know, that could happen. I, I, I could see a team, you know, like, excuse me, I mean, LAFC. And that, that's the a, that's a frustrating part kind of um, with, with the Champions League because it's like I could really see a team like LAFC or Atlanta United beating. They're, they're built. Beating these Liga MX teams, you know, but they're not going to do it coming out of preseason right no. away. It, now, yeah, it, when they're in their most competitive stage, yeah, that, that would that'd be the perfect time. You yeah. know, to play against these teams. Uh, before we get into our first discussion, um, please, 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 uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Um, they're both uh, the P O Five. Also, be sure to uh, like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel. You'll get all our updates when we go live. I've been trying to get a little better with posting post game videos. I'm gonna post the uh, post match press conferences um, on there too. Uh, try to help the dynamo out a little. I, I know it's not big, but it, it helps. Um, also, in the cu- or description down below, uh, be sure to click and vote for our first annual The Peels Houston Dynamo Player of the Year. Um, we are working with the organization to try to uh, present that award after the final match of the season against LA. Um, but please, please, please take two seconds out of your day. Go vote on that. We're... Uh, we're laughing at some of the votes because there's one outlier, but we're not going to get any any of the results until that Monday, um, which would be next Monday is when the vote will close. Um, Good. Yeah, no, I I, I I do have to applaud you for uh, the social media work that you've been doing as far as tagging these local media oh. outlets, man. And uh, Calling honestly, them out. All, yeah, all, <laughs> all I got to say is to whoever's watching and uh, listening to us, whenever you see that pop up on Twitter, retweet it like it share it just mass mass yeah. produce that and know, i'm not that, trying that's to, gonna keep that's i'm not keep doing it, it to be rude i'm doing it no, to show no. that like yeah no i mean you know but yeah call, call them out fans you know, why you know why why aren't they why aren't you covering their team right it's now? the it, it's it's a it's a vicious cycle because i actually think this would be the best time for them to cover this team yeah with all with everything that's happening with the fans uh with the changes that they're talking about this would be the best time to cover this team. But I also feel like it's a vicious cycle, too. You know, you don't have fans in the stadium. You're, the, the matches it would haven't been – the results haven't been there. But at least if the media covers it, it's out there more, which regardless if the team's mediocre or not, it's still probably going to help people realize, hey, they're relevant. They're here in the soccer, city. Soccer, soccer, man. You know? And, you know, we got a – you know, we've had – I mean, if you want to consider them superheroes, we have, you know, Black Panther on our team. And then we also got, you know, uh, we also got Superman on our team now. So, yeah. like, I mean, that's pretty legit, man. I, I really like uh, Christian Ramirez. I think he's going to be a good, uh, I think he's going to rep H-Town hardcore. Like, I, I think, like that. He just looks like H-Town. I, uh, I'm i thoroughly excited to see what's going to happen with him next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, we're going to take this way back. We're going to take it back to September 11th. Uh Houston Dynamo hosted uh, Minnesota down at BBVA. Um, and 
Man. <laughs> you know who actually stood out in that game? Fred Moyer mm-hmm. yeah. actually had a that pretty was, decent game. That that save, that goal, oh my God, man, that save to keep that clean sheet, mm-hmm. dude, was legit brick wall for us right there. Yep. Uh, coming in the clutch, uh, keep that, you know, keep us up to nothing. That yeah. was late in the game. That, yeah, Flynn Myer did did well. Joe Willis throwing his head, mm-hmm. twelve shots, mm-hmm. and yet uh, five of them on target. Uh, six block shots, clean sheet. Um, I mean, this is a team that went into LA and beat LA. Yep, LAFC. Um, this is a team that's riding high right now. Minnesota United. Um, they they rocked us. All year, uh, including the U.S. Open Cups uh, elimination, and uh, honestly, man, it, it was a uh, it felt good. It felt good to finally get back in the win column yep. and finally snap that winless streak. Uh, they were uh, coming off that Minnesota was coming off that LAFC win that yeah. that week before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and they're yeah. currently third in MLS standings. So yeah, see, so I mean, beating a team like that really gives you some momentum. I mean. It, it kind of fell apart in the next game, but uh, and I wouldn't even say it fell apart. I, I I really 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 like we were kind of talking off air about about the officiating man. It's yeah, just, it's atrocious, man. You know, because, but you can't. I I I don't know if I can how to word it. I mean, that's I don't a know point, if you really. A, I don't know if you really want to always pin it on the ref. Sometimes. Look, if you know the ref's going to call a bad game, then you need to play around it. I mean, the VAR, he went and looked. I mean, do you want to just skip to the Vancouver game then? <laughs> I mean, because, like, I mean, that's that, that's the game I really want to rant about. Because uh, the, the penalty that was called on Minotas. Was not a penalty. but That well, was not a penalty. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, going back to the... <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the Minnesota match, uh, Mara did score in the 37th minute with the uh, assist from Beasley. Beasley still looking ageless. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm putting weight on. I can't run farther or longer than three minutes, and this guy's like 80 years old running for a full 90. <laughs> I mean, I, 80 years old in soccer years, I guess. You know, no, Beasley is he, – yeah, he doesn't skip a beat. Um, you know, he, he's – He's a good. He's the leader that we have, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, it it's unfortunate this is his last season. Yeah. Um, because man, I would love, I would love to have him at least just one more year. But I can't blame the man, you know. Like if you're, you're gonna play one more year, you know. I mean, he probably wouldn't even want to do it here though. No. Um. No, I mean, yeah, Beasley Beasley's amazing. Mar Maro is still doing it. Uh, Christian Ramirez, dude, getting that, sealing that win for us too. Christian Ramirez, I mean, just. Again, with an assist from Morrow. If I, I the, those two linking up, uh, I, I, I didn't. I don't think I've seen Morrow play a two up top that well. You know, um, no. And the the chemistry that these two have together is really great. And I, I would like to see that carry over to next. Some season. something that I want to throw in at the end of this show. We'll have mm-hmm. a real quick discussion mm-hmm. about it because I, I want to keep the player movement and talk mm-hmm. till after the season. Um, mm-hmm. But I do want to throw something your way. Uh, Christian Mira is in the 44th minute with the assist from from Mauro. Mauro just doing Mauro things. Um, yeah, we'll close that close the book on that one. Um, that takes us to the Vancouver match, which was that following Saturday, September 14th. Um, two one loss. Mm. Same old story when traveling to Vancouver on turf. I mean, you could throw all think, the. I don't think I've had so many last minute losses or draws. Just all in one season, just it, I mean it, and it sucks because it's like, man, when you're winning, you know, you're hyped. Yeah, I'm always hyped, you know. And of course, those last minute losses, they they always but hurt every single time. Vancouver's done this now two weeks in a row. Yeah, I mean, yeah. going back, I'm I'm gonna switch gears just real quick again. Going back to my rant, when I got done hanging out with you guys on Saturday, I probably watched. Probably a good four or five matches off and on. Mm-hmm. I'm switching between a couple. The Atlanta Columbus game, not not Columbus. Um, oh, San Jose. I, I thought, no, it was San Jose. Oh, the Atlanta San Jose game. The it was Vancouver Colorado. Yes, Vancouver Colorado. These games go down the wire. Yeah. I mean, Atlanta looked like they were about to lose a game and be up. They were still up a man. They can. They scored three goals in the last what 
two, three minutes of the match. Vancouver comes back to tie the game in the dying seconds of that match. If you can't get hype about that in this league, I mean, you're paying attention for the wrong reasons. I got hyped about it because it honestly helped us out a little bit. Um, Jorge says uh, he watched a video where Minota <laughs> says he's been begging for someone to play along him. Good. So does that mean that the link between him and Elise just was never there, or it's never been strong well, enough? But like Elise, I mean, Elise isn't a straight striker, though. Yeah. You know. Well, he's according to Elise, he is. Well, he's playing that winger position, man. But uh, I, I, I like I like the two strikers up top. You know, yeah. I, we haven't had that actual chemistry in a long time. Um, I mean, man, before before Wilmer Cabrero it hasn't been like that. Um, I don't remember what Owen Coyle was rolling with. I don't even want to. Yeah. I don't even know if I want to um, those days. <laughs> but going to the Vancouver game, uh, do not ask me how to say his name, but the PK that was awarded on the foul on Morrow, uh, Morrow that was not a foul. Um, I mean, look, man, it, 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 it was – the ball went into him. He – it kind of like cur- – it's been a minute, so. But he didn't even make a – into it, but – like I don't know what you're supposed to do at that point. Like he I mean, was you holding go to his VAR, he was holding yeah, his goods. You get, like, yeah, <laughs> you go to VAR and you look at it there and you still deem it a penalty, and it's that ref. I I told you I I really don't like it. I, if somebody knows like what his name is, I can't remember what his name is. Um, definitely post yeah. it in the comments. But um, dude, he he sucks because I watch, remember we were watching your game Atlanta and Union. He was coaching. You know, he was refing that one. Um, and I mean, it seems like his calls are just blatantly obvious. You know, I mean, what's the point? And this has been—I mean, VAR has been an issue throughout. The, yeah, if anything, it was supposed Why to have it. It was supposed to make things better. And if anything, so it's we, made us question. We, we have the pro we refs have, even more. <laughs> we have that. We have VAR that doesn't work, but we don't have goal line technology because what was it? DC. I think it was DC that recently got a goal not allowed. Uh, not called for. Them. Yes, because it, it was a. Uh, wasn't that the? Was that the Portland match? I don't remember which one. Where it went. It's full, been a busy week, man. <laughs> was it this week or last week? I think it was last week. Yeah, it was like last. Yeah, week. yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah, who they were playing. Been yeah. A lot of, yeah, there was a lot of. Uh, there was a lot of issues, you know, and um, even Matt Doyle was like, Dude, "What the heck? How's that?" Ball clears the line, and it's still not a goal. But it doesn't matter because there's no goal line technology. Yeah. Um, but you got broken VAR. But so I'm saying the league, like it, it can be competitive, but man, they got a lot of issues they got to work out. Yeah, they do. Um, and then as the last dying seconds were clocking da- or ticking down in that game, uh, Freddie Montero, who I still think is a extremely bright young star in this league, uh, scores. What Freddie, a young, do you know that he's not that? I mean, he's like a washed up player from back in the day. With, Seattle that really? just came back to Vancouver. Freddie Montero? Why am I thinking he's like in his 20s? Dude came back like he um, honestly he he came off the bench for a reason. That was that dude used to be legit with Seattle. He's not I'm googling his age. Google his age. He said he's 32. 32. Thank you. Okay, I retract Thank, that statement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, bro, yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, Freddie Montero, man. Just kidding. Yeah, Freddie Montero. He had, out. he had to be the. <laughs> of course, it had to be him that played. Yeah, of course, it had to be him that scored that goal against us too. Yeah. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking about. In my mind, I'm thinking about the kid they Charlie Davies. Out. No, the kid they transferred out. To, uh, to Bar- Yeah, to Bar- Charlie Davies. Yes. I'm thinking of the other Charlie Davies. The one that played for the Union. Played for our, uh, the Rebs. Yeah. Kudamane? No. Anyway, moving on. Alfonso um, oh, There you go. See? Thank you. God. <laughs> you had the last name, right? Thank you. I know. <laughs> man. Goodness. Yeah. Edson Ochoa is a god for that. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, that game sucked. I want to move on from it because yeah. it hurt. No, but sadly, uh, you know, uh, it, I mean, we were still not eliminated from playoffs because we won that Minnesota game, man. And Ooh. somehow, moving somehow. on to the next one, Ooh. our playoff Ooh. hopes are still alive? Question mark. Um, Wilson had posted the actual percentage, I think, on 
Uh, oh, chances to make yeah. it? You want me to read that? Yeah, yeah so good. Wilson on Twitter, yeah, he posted that. Um, <laughs> so if we win out, it's a 1 out of uh, 12 chance. 1 out of 12 chance to, win, uh, to make playoffs. Uh, we need two of these three things to happen. So FCD to earn less than two points in their final two games. San Jose to earn less than three points in their final three games. And Portland to earn less than three points in their final three games. So, I mean, <laughs> anything can happen, right? What was the actual percentage? Uh, he didn't give me percentage. No. I mean, he didn't give it to me, but I just found this on Twitter. Uh, yeah, credit to Wilson uh, for that post there. Um, I, I like stats like that because I just don't want to go out there and actually do the work. I on. think according to uh, – was it – is it uh, 358? The uh, they, they do a bunch of uh, math stuff. Uh, normally I, I bring them up on here and for some reason I can't remember the website. Um, but I think they have just greater than a 1% chance of making the last playoff position. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's uh, still alive. I mean, so you're saying there's a chance? There it is. <laughs> um, uh, no, but I mean, as far as like the mentality comes for the team, you know, I, I and I, I'm sure Davey Arnold is doing this. You know, just keep the playoffs out of your mind because it is out of your your control. Yeah. You know, um, and just take it game by game. Just win. Just win a game. Just and if you're not even doing it for the playoff position, do it for your pride at this point. Yeah. So go into LAFC and let them not take us seriously and just. Sucker punch him. Mm-hmm. So that takes us to the Orlando match Saturday night. Uh, I it was really like I was watching two totally different matches. The Dynamo looked okay in the first half, not horrible, but they did give up a a goal off a set piece with a beautifully placed ball to uh, Dom Dwyer who headed it in. Um, and yeah, we we by the way we were getting ripped up for that Alfonso Davies. I need to take my I need to take my credit my soccer credits away there. Charlie Davies for New England, right? I think he, he went he played for New England, got a DUI, was cut from the national team, and then he got a DUI. Yeah, and then that. he got picked up by the Union, played there. Not oh, even, you would y'all would pick him up. Come on now. Well, I think we needed a body on the bench. Oh, there you go. So I mean, there's a couple on our. He didn't even really start for them either. <laughs> Um, unless it was like a midweek game, like yeah. to give a start a rest. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he played like not even a full season. Now he's into announcing or whatever. Um, but in the sixth minute uh, set piece, Dom Dwyer header beats Joe Willis. Um, you know, I mean, I, I can't put it too much on the defense on that. I think Joe Willis just read read to play wrong. He's done it a couple times, man. Yeah. He's done it. Quite a few times, actually, man. And, um, I mean, it happens, you know. I mean, I can't really say much. It's not like it's a surprise right now at this point. I mean, when we were down one nothing, it's just like well, crap, and we weren't coming back in the first half. Yeah. And it was honestly the first half was not a very entertaining first half. No. Way. Second half, obviously, you know, regardless of the goals, the action was still there, which is yeah. what I like. You know, I, I want to see more. I want to see more chances, man, you mm. know, and uh, challenges on the ball. And, um, I mean, we won. <laughs> yeah. Um, Boniac uh, did make player or uh, team of the week, and yeah. so did Christian Ramirez. Uh, well deserved. Boniac, Boniac had a very good game. Boniac is just. Is he our uh, next Beasley a- when it comes to longevity? I think so. Yeah. I think he's, yeah, man. I mean, he seems like he also still hasn't skipped the beat. I mean, the man, uh, he, he's still, he's been with us for a minute, you know, since uh, 2012. And, yeah. Um, first DP signing back in the day, baby. What's <laughs> up? Boniac coming back to life, man, making team of the week. I didn't think I would ever say that again. No. You know, Boniac I honestly thought Boniac team. might, and he's been solid the last couple of weeks. I, I honestly. Been, Boniac has been solid for his, Okay. Boniac has played very well for us this year. Um, Beginning of the season, I thought he might be the other one that's up. out. Well, as far as him not giving up, like Boniac doesn't stop. Uh, he has heart, and I like that about Boniac Garcia. And I think honestly, that's obviously what this team needs is uh, is just heart and just they need someone to. Yes, they need a leader, 
but they need someone that will kind of keep pushing them, you know, um, and control things on the on the field for them. Yeah. You know? And uh, and Boniac is really really proven it to me because uh, uh, I, I I wasn't I mean passes past that prime back in the day in 2012 when we first signed him and then 2013 and all that and then we started going down in our slump again yeah boniac has kind of fallen off a little bit you know so this year he kind of resurrected himself granted it's not the best year but he's he's showing up yeah um struna which i i couldn't stop laughing in the first five six minutes of this match because he got in dom dwyer's head and they were chippy real chippy back and forth for a good three four minutes um, after Struna fouled him, which it wasn't even really a hard foul, Dom Dwyer embellished a little, and Struna was just in his shit for a good, good, good little while. Dom Dwyer embellishing, no, <laughs> no, that's not yeah. True. Hector uh, said I mean, uh, Willis was on fire in the last twenty mm-hmm. minutes. He, yeah, we're so. getting there. Yeah, I mean, I, keeping the game three points for us heck yeah dude i mean joe willis there was like one save he had where it just bounced off the post and off his face dude. yeah just like i mean joe willis is legit um during that game there so like christian ramirez and Mara's link up yes <laughs> yeah so go ahead and read the score line on it the yeah um Minnesota so deal. albert lease with the assist from christian ramirez and memo rodriguez and That's up for 70, goal of the week. Seventieth minute, yeah. Go vote for that because it's not even that it was just a great header, which it was. It was the cross, like Did you, hands down, dude. There, there was something that stood out more on that on that play. Was the little heel flip to to uh, to Christian? Yeah, to Christian. From memo. Yeah, just it yeah. was so subtle, and if you blinked, you missed it. Yeah. I, I went back and watched it on the replay like four times, and it was so cheeky. Kind of, kind of <laughs> speaking of that, still, you know. Uh, Memo Rodriguez, if he can, if he can stay healthy, man. That kid's got a. It, there's a lot of young talent too, still. Okay, with Memo Rodriguez. Yeah. He just seems like he's just. This year, he's he's obviously made himself a, you know, player mm-hmm. for us, a starting player. Um, he was leading our goal. He was leading goal scoring at the beginning of the year for us. Uh, I can't remember what it was. Do you? But, I'll I'll save this for after this discussion. Uh, let me let me save it. Um, but Chris Ramirez and what's and, up, Cisco? Yeah, it's been a minute. Um, this Christian Ramirez and Morrow link. Uh, I know this is what third time we've talked about it already. This match or you know this show. Um, you know, I think that's the story that stands out in this. It game. is. I think. I think it. Honestly, personally, it closes the door on Elise. After after the I, way they played, I think I but, now granted I want Elise to have a good game or a good last three matches. Le- let them let them end the season on a high note. And honestly, I would, would move it, them. But why would it close? Why would what does Albert at least have to do with Trisha Ramirez and Mara linking up? Because They're if two forwards. I get that. But you're going to have Trisha Ramirez should honestly keep playing with Albert the Lease on the winger as well. Uh, because, I mean, you have the two Because I'm, I'm going like to tell you what's going to happen. Christian Ramirez crossed I'm, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Is, I no, I totally agree where you're coming from. And I would love to see more of the, those three playing together because I don't want to see Kyoto back. Mm-hmm. But those three would probably be explosive going in the next season. But if you have... Elise, who wants to be a striker, according to his quotes today, how he's tired, he can't play that wing role, doesn't want to play deep in the defense and bring the ball up. He, Why do I feel like it would be another Kyoto situation going into the next season? Especially if whoever's our manager comes out and says, Ramirez is our lead guy, Mara's our lead guy. I don't Sorry. Think- I don't think Albert Elise is like that though. You can't really compare him to Kyoto. I don't, I don't think. Like, I don't think he is. I'm not saying Kyoto's he is. Got, if Kyoto was good on the pitch, Kyoto is great on the pitch. It's what he does mm-hmm. off the pitch. That, um, that Hector Hector him. wants to know what do you guys think about starting or uh, Tommy starting over Memo? I, I don't like a, it. I don't like that either, man. I I, I think uh, Memo's honestly, a Memo, lot younger. Yeah, Memo is a lot younger, and 
Memo plays that position a little bit better than Tommy Mack. Tommy Mack is just too spotty for me, man. If anything, um, it like say you have a midweek match, you play on a Wednesday and then on a Saturday. That Saturday, Memo starts, plays all 90. That following Wednesday, if there's a match, Memo starts, you sub him off in the 75th minute for Tommy. I don't let Tommy don't let Tommy backup. play. Yeah, I can see Tommy playing backup for Memo. I mean, if we're like winning two nothing or something, you know, because uh, he's just. I mean, he's not that good. He's not that great, and it showed uh, um, because it seemed like when Memo came on the in that game, it, he just brought life and energy to that team. Uh, Cisco says if Memo is healthy, he should always start over Tommy Mack over anyone else. Uh, not sure, but Tommy Mack, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jorge says, Memo has not showed up prior to this game. Tommy has been consistently okay. I still I think mean, your Memo, upside's... Memo, is, Memo had a lot of injuries this year, which is yeah. kind of common, though. That's that's my only issue. It is Memo worrisome, though. Yeah, because it's it seems like, yeah, he, he can't stay... He can't, I don't want to say he can't stay fit, but it's just injuries, you know? Um, but also, I mean... Give him a break when it comes down to his form, though, too, because he is still learning. This is his first year, actually, yeah. like being you know a starting player for us. So there's a lot of a lot of talent that's going to be untapped in this kid. Um, but uh, there was something else I wanted to, to touch on as well. Um, yeah, no, Tommy Mack. I, I'm not a big fan of that. Okay, so and one thing I one thing I will say though too is uh, uh, Davy Arnold's sub for uh, Morrow. It was late in the game. I, I think it's time on that, yeah. Uh, um, for uh, Tomas Martinez, I wasn't a fan of that man. Like, okay, you already see the connection with Morrow, yeah. So it, it's already been a two-week break. There shouldn't be like, you see the good connection going on with Christian Ramirez and, and Morrow. Don't don't break it up. Stall. I'm gonna bring up a uh, 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 quote. I that was that was my big that was my big issue with the the substitution late in the game like that. Um, because it was honestly, it was getting fire, you know, uh, and continuing. If they would, <laughs> it, it could have been, it could have been three, three to one if, if uh, Albert the Lease just buried the ball in net instead of trying to get cheeky, yeah, and chipping the the goalkeeper. What are you, what are you looking up here? Uh, um, the quote that um that Davy had on uh that sub. Yeah, so so George, that's kind of what we were talking about. Is uh, uh, yeah, Justin sent me that video today where Elise says he doesn't like the new format. They wanted to play. Um, I, I I still don't. Maybe it's just me not wanting it to be a Kyoto situation, but Kyoto's been kind of an issue like off the field for a while. Yeah, you know. Albert um, Elise is still he he you, obviously you see him playing I don't see him going Davy on so. subbing Morrow out towards the end of the game, uh, so I think it was we're obviously in four four two with Morrow and Christian playing high together. You know uh, we felt like bringing Tomas in in the game to play wider for us and moving Alberth, uh high. It gives us a little more uh, solid in the midfield. So when we're talking about and defending in our two lines of four, I think Tomas is maybe stronger defensively than Alberth is. Um, though I will say that Albert, uh, with the work he's done tonight was fantastic on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, I'm asking a lot more of Albert defensively and he's bought into it. Um, we just felt it was a good adjustment to add Tomas Martinez. who brings the energy defensively. He's been good for us and he's obviously good with the ball when he needs to maintain possession and moving the ball or moving, then moving Albert high, um, uh, just have his threat of pacing behind uh it just makes sense for it just made sense for us at the time excuse me so um sorry i just wanted to touch in nobody nobody needs to worry because alex is watching now <laughs> hi hey alex hey guys uh go ahead and make sure to like and share our our youtube video if you guys haven't already um also give our uh our twiddle twi twiddle twiddle <laughs> twitter handle uh, the PL05, uh, give us a like as well yeah. and subscribe. Follow us. Um, and if you didn't hear in the beginning of the show, um, we are doing a the first annual the Peel Houston Dynamo Player of the Year award. Uh, we will presenting it. Will be presenting it at the end of the season. Um, cutoff is next Monday. Uh, 
to vote, all you got to do is go in the description below in the video. And then when I add the podcast, the description will also be in uh, the podcast details. Um, the link's there to vote. It's a Google form. Just go there, vote. It takes two seconds. I already made my vote. So, <laughs> Kevin Garcia. <laughs> Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. He's a legend. Come on, man. Jeez. Someone's got to give the man some love. Uh, I'm also going to post it in the chat right now. So. Yeah, so that, no, this, this is pretty cool. It's a, you know, obviously it's a new thing for the peel that we've never done before. Um, so, we, so we actually have a trophy. Yes. That we're going to give to the player. Yep. Oh, man. And what's the player supposed to do with this trophy? Is he going to uh, probably throw it in it the like, trash can? <laughs> just like walk out like, like the Eric Bird picture. That we <laughs> <laughs> um, I just posted the link in the chat too, so. <laughs> yeah, I know you're laughing about that one. <laughs> um, so that takes us to... Man, let's get some standings in here. We are we are not going to be eating out of wooden spoons this year, so I, that's making me happy. We have not been eliminated yet. Yeah. So <laughs> going to these next three matches, um, we got three matches remaining. We travel to LAFC, travel to RSL, and then host LA Galaxy. Um, the 2019 record versus these three teams, you're not going to like this. Zero wins, one draw, two losses this year against those three teams. So not looking too good. Combined of these next three teams, they have a 60, 60% win percentage, uh, 48 wins, 16 draws, and 29 losses combined. Um. You, just, you <laughs> just love stabbing me in the heart with that, don't you? No, I don't. Um, I voted twice. Can I vote more? You can vote as many times as you want, Jorge. Uh, oh, you can vote more than once? Because I would have voted Kevin Garcia more than once <laughs> than if I knew that. Um. Yeah, uh, Cisco says we've had the problem in the past with forward strikers, wingers, and then tracking back to defend. It happened with Barnes and Driver, etc. Uh, under previous managers, it has. And no, Jorge, it's not a participation award. <laughs> I mean, uh, hashtag what's wrong with 2019? You know, yeah, I mean, in all seriousness, though, when you sent that that link to me to uh, to go vote for it and. I was just like, ooh, this is actually kind of a tough decision because there are a few players out there. It did, you know that that would come to mind. Yeah, you know, I I, I think that there's still some still still some players that you know want to win. I mean, yeah. obviously, I hope they all want to win, but that actually show it. Yes. Um. So we'll see who steps up these next three games. I have a pretty good idea who it's going to be because I think he's going to make a name for himself, especially in this next match. Uh, Christian Ramirez will be traveling back to California Ooh, against LAFC. Man. Um, that match is this Ooh. Wednesday, September 21st, 9.30, Bank of, Amer or Bank of California Stadium, Cube 57. Um, All-time record against, we only have four matches played, so one win, one draw, two losses. Um, MLS, well, one of those is including Open Cup, an Open Cup win. Um, three matches, zero wins, one draw, two losses in MLS play. Uh, on the road, we've only played there once with one loss. Um, earlier this year, match day 19, uh, we lost to them 3 1. Uh oh, I know you want to say something. I mean, I, I'll wait for <laughs> I'll wait for predictions. I'll just wait for predictions. Predictions, yeah, all right. Um, LFC currently is the uh leading team in the west, they've already clinched the playoffs, clinched first round by. Um, I think they're only a few points off from uh. Clinching, clinching supporter shield. Yeah. I want to say if they win this week, I want to. I, I almost want to say they'll clinch it. I haven't looked at the math on that part honestly because I really don't give a shit about supporter shield. Um, they are currently nineteen. That, that, there's your participation because <laughs> FC Dallas got it. Oh, and I'm sorry, no, the FC da Dallas is that what that FC? This is why they should just be called Frisco. Dallas. That's, yeah, <laughs> this is why they should, they should just be called FC Frisco because he can't even spell Dallas right. Um, they're currently 19 wins, 8 draws, 4 losses. Last match was a 1-1 draw versus Toronto. And their last six, they actually haven't been that great. They're 1 win, 4 draw, 1 losses. Or 1 loss, excuse me. Um, they aren't great on the road as of late. Uh, two draws uh, with only 1 win in their last six at home. So... Uh, scratch that. Three wins in their last six at home uh, with one loss, three draws. Um, who is your player to watch out for for the Dynamo? Who do you think steps up and has a big game? 
Oh, wait. For our team for, or for, for LAFC? Dynamo. For the Dynamo. Oh, okay. Uh, Christian Ramirez. Sorry. Okay. Why? Yeah, uh, well, obviously, he's going to want to come out and beat his old team. Um, I mean, he did it to Minnesota. So why is it? Yeah. Why wouldn't he want that same mentality? I mean, dude, they're trying I've, to win. You know, they're they're just winning. It's game by game. So let me winning. let me ask you this, because Vela's the star guy there. Would this team be completely different with Ramirez? And would Ramirez be? Would he be in the same situation as Vela? Maybe not leading goal scorer, but would he be top five? Wait, are you saying if Christian Ramirez is playing with LAFC or? Yes, what? without without Vela. Um, nah, I I would say maybe maybe top five maybe I don't know uh I I he hasn't really like just actually just been a straight starter man he was playing with Minnesota when they were crap yeah you know um, could you imagine he was him now in Minnesota now behind you know Carlos Vela in LAFC so he hasn't really had much of a chance to really no. really truly prove himself uh, Jorge you says know? Memo will I show think. out in LA and I I actually agree. Yeah, I, yeah, I actually I my prediction is like actually going to shock you guys. I would like to see all you know, Maro, Memo, and Ramirez just ball out. Dude. Yes, like you know, I, I. So no, I mean, it's not going to be a it's not going to be an easy one at all. If if we miraculously get a win, my 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 mind and my brain hold, saying hold on before before we give predictions. Let me throw out a couple more things. Uh, Velo currently leaves the MLS with 29 goals. Or goals. He's two behind Martinez. Um, let me ask you this. Well, I'll, so this I'll, I'll is, throw so, this so at you. Essentially, this is probably like the most important game of the season for probably like – Both teams. Both teams. Yeah. Because it seems like – I haven't done the math yet. I was trying to do the math uh, about the supporter shield. Uh, Rossi – Diego Rossi currently has four goals in three matches against Houston. Um I feel that – I don't know how I feel about him this year. So, yes, if they beat us, they will clinch the Porter Shield. Great. All right. So, um, what is your prediction for this match? Man. Okay, oh, so – Let me type these out. All right, so here's my prediction. I'm going to predict a – Three two dynamo win. And you know it's it's probably yeah, you know, it I'm gonna predict three two dynamo win, Christian Ramirez scoring like in the eighty ninth minute. I can see that to win it. All but right. Carlos Vela gets both goals for Elias. So <laughs> I'm not predicting a win, but I say a three three draw. Ramirez has two. So we get eliminated from playoffs. <laughs> Hold that thought. <laughs> um, I think Ramirez has two, both assisted by Morrow. Morrow scores the other goal. So 3-3. Three, three. Um, Vela scores his two, two goals, ties Martinez. Um, makes LA hold on for one more week to get to the supporter shield. And... What what did you say the Dynamo needed they to need keep their to win, playoff? They need to win out. Yeah. <laughs> and, I think still be, and they would still be mo- up. Morale-wise, I think this could go down as feeling like a win for this team against a team I mean, yeah, at, you know, as it, LAFC it, with it, everything they've done this year, with how dominant they've been in the West. True. Yeah, true. Uh, Hector says Tommy is scoring too. Um, You're drunk. <laughs> my, my ball, let's do ball predictions. You want to do ball predictions? Um, hold on. Uh, Cisco said we've played well in LA with this core, uh, current core group. Closing out games has been a problem, though. And that's I think we go up two goals, two goals early, maybe two one, and then wow. Um, I just don't like this wire. And then obviously, with the Dynamo being the way the Dynamo have been this year on the road, uh, I say we. I, I think we give up late goals in the second half to, to for LA to come back and draw. Um, Sergio took the words out of my mouth there. Kevin Garcia <laughs> with the, the that was my bold prediction. Damn it. Um I I know it sucks. Dynamo will probably be officially eliminated 
Yeah, I but, mean, you know, it, it's not like it's. I mean, for but me, I would I've feel good. I would yeah. feel good if I you're just the wanna, Dynamo. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to kind of close out this year, just kind of on a high a little bit. Could you imagine pulling a draw against LAFC, who hasn't played well as of late? Okay, draw in LA after you've been down in the bottom of the barrel the whole season to take them to a draw like that. So what happens? You know, like say like. Dynamo kind of do what they did last year against like the Galaxy, where they're down. I think it was two nothing. I think it was two nothing. Um, and then they just came out in the second half and beat the Galaxy. And on that was on decision day. And if that was the case, because right now RSL is, I, I I think they um go to standings. RSL's not totally in it yet. I mean, they could still drop out of the playoffs. So well, yeah, but I mean. I think the only team here, so what, there's there's nine. Not, not saying to, not saying we're gonna make to, it. What are you trying to? Yeah. So if if we go if we go into LA and we beat LA, okay? okay. If I'm RSL, I would be extremely worried about that match against Dino, or Houston. Well, let's just hope that they're they're not and just not taking us seriously. Just just kind of take us lightly. Yeah, but could you imagine that? You go beat LA. Say RSL loses on Wednesday, and now they're they're like, oh shit! Well, now we have to win our last two games to stay above, you know, the seventh spot. I mean, that's the thing though is like late and it, it goes back to like what we talked about at the beginning of the show, how competitive uh, MLS is and how much these standings can jump up and down. H- Hector brings up a really good point that I'm going to throw mm-hmm. at you. He said, "And what happens if we do make the playoffs?" Man, so and this is a, you know, this is something Josh and I have been throwing around yeah, for weeks now. It, I I don't know if it's if it's a good thing or a bad thing for us. I I I, I still want change. You know, oh, but I agree. I, I think that we're I think we're on the right track for it. But because I also don't want I what happens don't want if them we win complacent. And then we we make it into the playoffs, and then ownership's like, oh, well, maybe maybe our team's oh, not that bad. Yeah. See, you know, but I, I, I get that. But that's kind of where it. I think that's still where it's weird. DFF, it's a weird argument. Nah, to, I, I, it's a weird conversation to have. I still think that's where DFFC comes into play because yeah. they're still supposed to, you know be more meetings. No, it's that's still no, that's still not good enough. Y'all stumbled into the playoffs. Yep. Yeah, as a fan, I I, I want the playoffs. Who doesn't want that? But I want that every year. Okay, so I let me ask you this: year. Like, because I, I really want that every year. I've been there. I've been there with my team. And it's bad. Don't act no, like hold your on, team hold, is no, all high. Money no, that's not really what I'm saying. Season. Let me finish. Let me finish. Is it worse to finish at the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the table, or finish right outside of the playoff race and and not have a chance to actually make the playoffs? Like, say you're three points below the cutoff line. What What is more painful? I mean, if you finish bottom of the table, you've known you've been shit all year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're if you're right below that cutoff line. You're, you're you're mediocre at best. Yeah. You yeah, know what? Yeah. What's more painful? Uh, actually, just barely missing playoffs probably be more painful. Kind of like LA Galaxy last year. Yeah. The mm. last couple of years. Well, no, well, no, I mean, that's right. I want to really were, yeah. highlight last year. But I mean, like, I knew my team was shit. Like, I knew it. I knew they, they'd give me hopes. You know, they started the season strong and then typical union collapse every year. Look, man, we've been shit. Like, we've been shit since, you know, 2014. Except for one, except for one season in 2017, we drew into the the conference finals. But we had nothing to show, you know, in the end on that. And then, yeah, we won the U.S. Open Cup. But, like, man, I want to be consistent. Like, I really want to be consistent. And, uh, I'm not saying they need to go out and just sign a huge big name star. You know, it's not it's not that. That's that's clearly what a lot of fans want. That's that that would just be going to draw, you know, attendance in because that's clearly what everybody's wanting. I want to be consistent every year. You know, I want to be that Kansas City because Kansas City, except for this year, they've been consistent. You know, yeah. after their rebuild, they man, dude, they were going on it. You know, every single so- season. Let's move from LA real quick. Let's wrap up our mid or our weekend game. Um, we're not going to get too deep into it, obviously, because they also have another match to play Wednesday. They play the LA Galaxy. Galaxy. Um, we do play. We travel to RSL Sunday, September 29th, six thirty. Um, 
at Rio Tinto, Q57. 29 overall matches uh, in MLS play, 12 wins, 7 draws, 10 losses. Last six versus RSL, two wins, two draws, two losses. Um, on the road in 14 matches, two wins, five draws, seven losses. George. Uh, Jorge? Yeah, Jorge, I'm sorry. Um, I, see, I never know that you, they, how, how, it, which way you want it pronounced sometimes. Okay, but anyways, <laughs> the second pick, I mean, Super Draft needs to go. It's – it. Yeah, sell that man. Cause well, Jorge, we're gonna save that one for another another day, um, probably closer to the draft on how very, Josh very, and I really feel about it. About that. And you can talk to GMs now. <laughs> you don't get star talent out of the draft anymore. You just don't. You get bench player guys. You get guys that you could send down like RGV, groom them, and then bring them back up. Um, but that 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 is what it is. Sergio says if your team mm-hmm. uh, mathematically has a chance to make the playoffs, everyone should be going for that and supporting it. The change will come on the off season. I, so. I, yeah, you know, and I agree with that. We need to be supporting that because, like, who doesn't want to make the playoffs? Yeah. Um, but you know, let's let's not get the, the complacent too either. That it, yeah. that it's okay, you know, because um, which I honestly think a, if they find the right coach, I, I think a good coach is going to help this team so, out a lot. Going back to our RSL match, uh, they currently sit fifth in the West, 14 wins, five draws, 12 losses, 47 points. Their last match was a 1-1 draw um, at New England. At New England, um, excuse me. Uh, they will host the LA Galaxy on Wednesday. That has huge playoff implications on both sides. Uh, last six, they're currently two wins, one draw, three losses. Um, so they're not that hot in their last six, but they are faring pretty well in their last six at home. They have four wins, one draw, one loss. Um, Rusnak leads the score with, or leads the uh, team with one goal or ten goals, excuse me. Um, so he's really their only player to watch. Um, but what do you, going off your prediction for the LA match? What is your expectation for the RSL match? Also, hold on real quick. Also, uh, Tony Beltran is out with a knee injury, and Nick Beasley is out with a foot injury. Um, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I don't know against RSL right now. Um, I think that's a harder match. match I, I, to pick. Yeah, I think that's a. I think that is a harder match actually to pick. Um, because I because that LAFC, yeah, we could say you know. It's a shootout. It's a blowout because there's a lot of stuff going on in that game. And Can we talk about it could be RSL very real quick? Lopsided on what we have, but RSL is just kind of like they were horrible in the beginning of the season. They fired their coach, hired a new guy. Well, that's not why they fired him though. Like he, Mike Pecky was not doing a bad job with that no. team. Mike Pecky picked that team up. It's what he what he did off the pitch and what he said. Well, not off the pitch. He said to the refs and I the, don't think he should fire a guy for that. I mean, it's a bad look on the club. Man. I mean, it is. But bad how many times club, have like Jose Mourinho called I mean, but out refs ML, in but EPL? You, but you hear all this. <laughs> but you hear like all this, like you know, racism and stand yeah. above it and all that. You know, that's completely against what MLS advertises and posts and is all about and stuff. And um, you kind of have to. You know? Yeah, you I don't think it'll be long before he gets picked up again. To be honest with I you, I don't either. I'm gonna tell you where he's gonna go. Hmm. He's got to be top. He's got to no be in their way, top five. No Easy. Way, no, we can do better. We can do better. I think we can do better, Mike Pecky. Well, so not much on the expectations because we don't really have much to go on. I'll, I'll have a better outlook after they play LA on Wednesday. After they play the Galaxy, they're going to be just been like one of those teams that just flying. Under they're the radar going just, to be tired after that. The Galaxy are going to take that game to the wire. I mean, they're, they're, like I said, it has playoff implications. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah, a lot uh, yeah, can really change because yeah. of that one match. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, it, it, it's going to be a, I mean, it's going to be a good one. I mean, I mean, I, I, the only reason I would watch it is just to tune in and see what players I'm going to be looking at yeah. besides, you know, Rusnik and stuff. Um, and, uh, Mulholland? Yeah. He's coming off injury now. He'll be, he is available for Wednesday's yeah, game. So, um, so <laughs> prediction. You do yours first. I did mine first last time. Um, I, I don't see a lot coming out of this game. Uh, 
I'm going to go 1-1 one, one draw, effectively eliminating the Dynamo. As much as I don't want to admit that. I, I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring affair. Oh, Josh, I'm not trying to make you cry. I'm not crying. I'm just like, man, I like, I'm just like, I'm, I'm saying my predictions are, they're probably not realistic, but I'm just, I'm not gonna say this is the game that eliminates. Next them. year, next year we're gonna keep track of these. I, I, I don't want them to be eliminated. I want them to win out. Like I want them to win out. I don't want them to be eliminated like that. I just want them to be like, well, you got eliminated because you lost all those other games that you had control over because you had a crap ton of games in yeah. hand over a bunch of player, a bunch of other teams. Um, I that's kind of like that actually that probably hurts the worst going back to that other question the fact that we had so many games in hand yeah you know um I'm gonna say uh one nothing Dynamo Maro Maro just no 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 take that memo no um, <laughs> and then he gets subbed out for Tommy 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 Mac Tommy Mac uh yeah that one it, it, it's gonna be tough and look. I mean, we've seen the writing on the wall. Yeah, the game against Orlando was great. The game against Minnesota brought our hopes back up. But it's just... So Victor Victor says uh, about uh, the uh, Super Draft. So my take, my take on it is that in previous Super Drafts, we don't really... We don't make the great picks. We passed up on a Christian uh, rolled on. But Victor Victor did say, uh, I disagree about the Super Draft. Yeah. Not, no, not as deep in talent mm. as years before, mm. but you can find good ta- uh, good players. Super Draft is an option, especially for the Dynamo to find affordable contributors. I agree with that. I don't, like you said, but I don't think you find stars anymore. This is a you, Super you Draft don't, you for don't. Yeah. lower bench players. But see, also like RGB the bench players. players that were, I mean, I don't have any to that come to mind well i will pin that in my head i will go back and look at our draft picks over the last 14 years i mean what is and it? then um, we'll talk about it right before the super draft what's his name with uh san jose um damn what was that kid's name that i wanted so bad we didn't oh him, yeah, um, yeah yeah i don't ask me i don't remember his name playing for us he was called up for us damn it what's his name We'll we'll figure that out. Yeah, we'll we'll have a super draft show. uh, Yeah, I know. Um, We need to have that. But with that being said, if you didn't watch MLS this weekend, or at least just watch the standings, you missed out. There is all but one position left. Um, There's all all the positions but one are locked up in the East right now for the playoff race. Um, NYCFC, Atlanta, uh, the Union, DC United, New York Red Bulls, and Toronto all have locked up playoff position with the seventh spot being up for grabs. Uh, With New England sitting on 41 points, Chicago Fire sitting on 38 points. It's going to be crazy to see how those two teams battle it out the rest of the year. Um, Jackson, Jackson, you Leo. Sorry. (laughs) I I wasn't going to rest on that. And then after that, between 8, 9, 10, and 11, they're all split by one point. Chicago Fire have 38 points. Montreal has 37 points. Orlando City has 36 points. Columbus Crew had 35 points. That's how close the East I'm is. I'm reading the chat yeah. right now. Our chat's going, you know, getting good about this super draft. Um, but that, that's how close the East is. Is that seventh spot, any of these guys down the 11th could technically get it. It's, yeah, I mean, it's not. It, typically it will come down to decision day. I mean, yep. that, that's the beauty about MLS is just how, how much it can jump back and forth. I mean, look at the look at the Western. The West it's, is crazy. It's not no, like nobody's clinched. That no, that's not right. That's not updated. Yes, it is. I was just updated today. They normally update it right after the match. Okay. Um, that's supporter shield. You're yeah, you're right. No, you're um, right. I'm LA Galaxy are the or LAFC are the only ones to lock up first round by, and the conference. Um, no other team has punched their ticket yet out of the West into the playoffs. Seattle Sounders sitting on 50 points, Minnesota 49, LA Galaxy 48, RSL 47, FC Frisco 45, San Jose 44, Timbers 44, Rapids 39, Houston 37, SKC 37, um, with the Vancouver being eliminated. Um, There is something that stood out to me earlier, and I was talking to uh, somebody about it. Um, 
and something that's going to come back and bite the Dynamo in the ass, and it has. Minus Vancouver. No, actually, Vancouver has a better road record. The Dynamo have the lowest win percentage on the road. The lowest. Even Cincinnati. I mean, man, that's not the a worst surprise. team in the league. It's not league. a surprise, though. We lost to Cincinnati on the road. I know. But that is something that you're going to have to change, especially with this new playoff, of course. playoff yeah. format. Mm-hmm. If you think that you want to get into the playoffs, well, you better string together some road wins, too, so you're not the worst team. it's a little team. late in the season for that right now. I mean, well, no, but you, I'm well, saying they're gonna have overall. To string, they're at, they're going to have to string some. But that's also been a that's also been a topic of discussion like early on because we had all the bulk of our home games were at the beginning of the season. Yeah. And then it was just a straight stretch of just road games. Um in I mean, yeah, that's just been a topic of discussion at the beginning of the but season. But it's also been it's even, also you know, been an issue for the Dynamo for the last And that could also how many years? ultimately like affected a lot of performance, you know, just losing constantly on the road. They've never fixed the road issue except for grabbing a couple of wins this year, yeah. you know, uh, miraculously. I mean, it, I, I didn't expect this to go into. I'm gonna end up game, going so. back, and you know, how I have the chart of their all-time record. I'm gonna go back and look at that for road versus win, and come up with the win percentages. Um, Why? But so I have it. You gonna hurt me again? <laughs> not, not to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. You but are. I feel that it, it's some. They're gonna have to change it next year you you can't be a playoff team now and not have more than four wins i mean you look at almost all these playoff teams i, I mean minus rsl dallas and san jose they all got four plus wins change, change is kind of just like what a lot of people are preaching and stuff you know and it's just yeah, yeah i mean yeah better better results better better consistency more consistency um you know i mean a lot of those losses on the road have been like one goal games There's, mm-hmm. except for like the Atlanta and uh, the Frisco game they haven't been complete blowouts they've been like one goal games and then a lot of them have been like the Vancouver game yeah uh I mean I think this is the most I've seen in a season where we've just given up the lead or uh had a chance to get a point late in the game like last minute dying seconds yeah you know uh New York City FC Vancouver um those are the two that just come to mind right off the bat right now because it's been a it's been a long season, um, especially kind of when you're just just beating up. I mean, getting beaten up. Yeah, over and over and over again. So, with that being said, we'll close off the Dynamo stuff just to cover a few more things uh, before so, we go. So go. yeah, so uh, the Dynamo rookies in 2017, uh, Sam Junqua, who's played with us a handful of times, just uh, the what was that that tournament? Yeah, well, Open Cup. But what was that other tournament? No, oh, uh, you're laughing. Lakes Cup. Yes, the, that yeah, the made up tournament. There you go. Um, he's played with us in that, and when you know, played in the penalty. I don't think he should have been the one having to take that penalty. To no. be honest with you, but uh, besides the point. Uh, and then Eric McHugh, who is the uh, who was in the homegrown game. Um, you know, Eric McHugh. Yeah, I, I mean getting recognized in MLS like that that's that's big for us yeah um in my eyes um but as far as like the super draft is uh, I I want to see more I want to see some more stuff I'm more I'm more focused on like what the academy will yes. provide that's that's kind of where I, I I'm gonna look at you know obviously because those are your future players yeah um Victor does bring up the point you know uh it's kind of like the depth part of it, mm-hmm. I guess, if you want to call it yeah. that. But it should be called the super depth draft. <laughs> I mean, um, I, 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 I just don't really just take super draft seriously. Right so now. to close that, the MLS, just so we can cover a couple more things. Um, Dynamo only have three matches left, guys. Three. Demarcus Beasley also only has three more matches left in the Dynamo kit. So... I it's only one more home game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually think I might try to get tickets to that game. I mean, if I don't, that, if I don't I'm, get I've credentials been, for I've that been game, saying that's the the game that yeah. I'm gonna go to, uh, just because I haven't been honestly, I haven't been go to a, going to a game because I just haven't been having the money for it and haven't had the time. You know, yeah. Um, I'll have just stayed home and watch it from home. Um, know? but with that being said, it's gonna be crazy to see what happens over 
because there's a ton of midweek games. I think almost every team is playing a midweek game, minus maybe a couple. And then there's uh, a full slate on Saturday as well. So I'm really curious to see what happens decision day. We're two weeks out from decision day, which is one of the best days in MLS uh, for me. I I really want – I really hope that the LA Galaxy would – and this is a long shot, but I would love to just end their season. <laughs> But it's I, I, it's probably not going to happen. I, I could see them clinching it against uh, yeah. RSL on Wednesday. So, uh, co- cover a couple more things. Uh, the Houston Dash did lose to Portland Thorns. Uh, won nothing last Saturday with the lone goal coming from Tobin Heath. It's only our third of the season. Dash are currently sitting in seventh place in the NWSL with a record of 7, 4, and 11 with 25 points. Uh, they're currently one win and four losses in their last five, unfortunately. Um Dash will play their last home match of the season uh, this Wednesday, 8 p.m. versus the Washington Spirit. The match is on ESPN, uh, too, uh, which is kind of cool. NWSL is finally getting some recognition on bigger networks. We're definitely going to have to do a super draft show because the chat is going off right now. Yeah, we can definitely do that. This is great because I'm reading Um, a lot of this stuff here. Okay, Julian Gressel. Victor says Julian Gressel is a perfect example of finding a value in super draft. Uh, 2017. I mean, Julian Gressel, he's yeah. consistent, you know, but he yeah. he's also playing. We'll get, we'll get Victor on for that show. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> Victor. Yeah, we might have to get you. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, no, you retracted the me- message. But anyways, <laughs> anywho, Victor, we got to get you on for that show, man. Um, uh, yeah, if you join us and for that. Other big Dash news. Um, the Dash will be traveling uh, in the international break. Uh, October 5th, they will be taking on Tigris, who has won. They won the title in La Liga uh Feminine champion or da, 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 da. the women's league in, in, in Mexico. Um, they will be traveling to Monterey for that, so it, it is kind of a big deal. Uh, the NWSL teams haven't really played too many international friendlies with other other teams, so I'm actually really intrigued in that to see how they stack up against Tigris. And uh, if I remember, they're playing in Tigris's home stadium for that match. I mean, you're looking at 44 plus thousand people. Um, for a for a women's match, and I, I I think their their draw is pretty good down there, right? Yeah. Um, in other news, Messi did win the 2019 FIFA Best Player Player Award. We were talking in the chat. Look, it's always going to be Messi or Ronaldo <laughs> until either one of them retire. Um, the reason I bring this up is because the bigger news for U.S. soccer fans is Meg Rapino did win the 2019 Best Female Player Award. Uh, congrats to her awesome award um, she was polarizing during the wor- World Cup leading up to the World Cup she's just a polar- polarizing figure regardless and then Joe Ellis did win the best women uh, coach of the year award as well um, what? was this really something I, I saw in one of our other chats uh, jo- Jill Ellis wants to coach the U.S. men's national team. Is that that's probably a joke? Okay, um, because cause if she that would was probably the, do better than if the that current. That was guy. actually true, man. Please, like, please, I, I would be okay with that. Um, going back to the dash, though, uh, I did put the link straight to tickets um, for that match. Let's get some people out there to support the dash, um, even though their season hasn't been great. It is the final home match of the season, um, so. Uh, the only other thing that we have to cover is something that came out uh, earlier in the week. Uh, we were going to talk about it in the last show, and it is something that needs to be addressed. Um, there are a lot of opinions about it, uh, and that is Mexican soccer is cracking down on the notorious goalkeeper goal kick chant, um, which we are not a fan of. Uh, a lot of U.S. fans aren't. A lot of People outside of Mexico supporters are not a huge fan of it, and even Mexican I mean, supporters someone, I aren't mean, even a fan of it. I mean, I saw someone actually uh, uh, pro it or for it. I mean, my thing is, is I, it's just an. I mean, it's me, loosely it's just translated in English, in multiple different references. It look, it shouldn't be there. If you're if as soccer as a whole, if you're trying to cut down on uh, if it's killed off in the chance. roots, if it's killed off in the roots of where it's coming from, then I mean, honestly, good luck at stopping that too. Um, um, then it would die off over here. But what but, they uh, are proposing to um, in Liga MX play, and as well as international games, um, the federation has already been uh, 
the Federation has already had issues with it. They've already been fined multiple times by FIFA. Um, so Liga MX president uh, Enrique Benella, uh, Benilla um, said on Friday, this was last Friday, um, that starting week 15 of the current Apertura season, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I can't pronounce that correctly anyway, um, the referees will be allowed to temporarily stop the match if the chant is heard, take players back to the locker room for five to ten minutes, and if it continues, force clubs to play their next home game behind closed doors if it doesn't stop. Um, they will also provide during week fourteen or week eleven to fourteen of the season there will be multiple um, informative and educational warnings about what will happen in the future if the goalkeeper chant is heard. Um, uh, Victor, to change topics real quick, Victor said, uh, I was right the first time. Gressel was number eight pick in the 2017 Super Draft. Remember, Donovan traded out number four down to number 10 for Joe Holland. Who? Um, no, he was the guy that didn't wear any socks. Uh, and then Jorge said, thank you, uh, Jay, for the dash tickets on Wednesday. Um, but the Mexican Federation will join Liga MX's effort to stamp out the chance starting October 15th in a CONCACAF Champions League match against Panama uh, Estadio Azteca. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Um, there's also going to be a three-step procedure implemented by FIFA for the national teams. Um, at the start of qualifying, they'll, the referees will first stop the match, then suspend it, and eventually abandon it if the behavior continues. Um, so I think the crackdown in Mexico's finally start. The Mexican Federation is realizing what can go on, um, and. I don't know, Josh. What what do you what do you think? Should it be eradicated from the game? Are you okay with it, or do you think it's really not that big of a deal? Um, I think it's I think it's annoying. Personally, I think it's stupid. I think it's a dumb chant. Um, that's just I mean that's my take. So, uh, sorry, if you don't agree with me on it, but um, yeah, no, I, I think it should be eradicated. It's uh, obviously it's offensive uh, to a lot of people. It's I mean it. It just is. I mean, you know, it's just what they're – they just don't like to hear it, you know. I mean, people don't like to hear it. and um, I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, you know, it's obviously uh, – it it means something very derogative. I mean, M- MLS cut down yeah. on – I want to say it was – it might have been TA or um, the American Outlaws uh, through international soccer. When there was a goal kick, they would scream, you suck asshole. Guess what? That got eradicated. They're not allowed to do it anymore. If they do, they get in a lot of trouble. So, um, Victor says, going back to the draft, Timbers, by the way, took Jeremy Abobasi with the fourth Man, pick, and they so, traded Dynamo for um, Yeah, so getting all this information, this Dynamo is kind keeps of like, screwing themselves. Yeah, so that kind of just falls on uh, you-know-who, you know, our, our, our general manager for trading those picks then. Yeah. Um, personally, I think it needs to be eradicated. It, it, there's no place for it. That's my opinion. Best in the world, Jorge. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, sorry. I do need to change my YouTube name. I, I made that uh, account years ago when I watched <laughs> wrestling as a younger kid. And, uh, so I, I have uh, – I just don't – I'm not logged in on the peel. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but with that being said, I think it needs to be gone. It is what it is. Other news real quick. Uh, Joseph Martinez – is out for several weeks with a knee injury or a foot injury, one of the two. Um, he was seen on crutches in a boot after the uh, the game from this past weekend. So it's curi- I'm curious to see what's going to happen with Atlanta. I don't think Atlanta can win a title without him. I think they can go deep in the playoffs, but I don't think uh, they can win no, a title yeah. without him. I think he's, a, he's obviously a lifeline. Uh, I mean, he just says uh, – he's just a goal scorer, man. I mean, the dude has a record. Um and uh, what is he sitting at on goal? What is he sitting oh, at this he's, year? He's like, close he's, up there, too. Yeah, I mean, he's not far off from that record again either. Um, so, I mean, yeah, no, uh, it, him going down would – but also the, the man's an Iron Man because he went out against the Union that that game that we watched. Uh, yep. So, I mean – When he got back up. Forgot, yeah. You know, just wait. If you, you're playing him on your fantasy teams, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, maybe bench him for this game. Um, Toros did win 2-1 over 3-1 over the Monarchs. Um, 
good for them. They've had a tough, <laughs> tough string of games lately. Um, Join the club. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's an organizational problem. <laughs> um, Chu Enrique is the goop. Hey, speaking <laughs> for the Toros, too, they also have a, an award. Yes. Yes. So uh, check out our friends over at Down in the Valley. Check out Edson. Puts out great content with them. Um, they also have a vote, too. Uh, uh, we will get there, Victor. Give us one second to do this. Um, they also have a vote, too, 2019 Down the Valley uh, Tour Player of the Year. Go vote. Check them out on their channel. Um, follow them on Twitter. Follow them on Facebook. Do the same thing you would do for us, for them. Um, also, uh, Victor, Reza, or Victor Reza said, check out Soccer Matters Tuesday. Albert Lease will be on as well. Um, so I will tune Avoid in if Glenn I don't, Davis. if I don't tune in Tuesday, I will definitely listen while I'm opening at work on Wednesday because the podcast will be up. Yeah. Same thing mm-hmm. for us. Our podcast will be up tomorrow, Tuesday, yeah. September Eight. 24th. Yeah. All, all so. is like you said, all soccer matters. I like that. You know? Yes. Um, so definitely show each other some love on that. Um, so share all of our, uh, share all of our stuff for us. Please give us the like, uh, on the, the video, like us on whatever you're listening to when this is podcasted, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Podcast, um, Apple Music, all of that. Give us the like, share the show. Um, make sure you go out and vote for our award. It's in the chat. It's also in the description, and it'll be in the description for all the podcasts as well. So I did my thing. <laughs> um, but Give you a, an applause for your, your tours there. Um, definitely, uh, definitely thank you everybody in the chat, Victor, Alex, um, Jorge, everybody, Hector. Yeah, thanks for lighting up that, that chat there. Um, we, we appreciate this, that. Yeah, 76 the minute water break <laughs> there, you know, we were, so. Uh, this is what pushes this show forward is yeah, you guys chatting. Yeah, we man, don't have a call know, this line. Is, yeah. This, this pushes it. Yeah. So. Maybe a call line eventually. I don't know. That wouldn't be till like next year yeah. we do that. So I mean, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that we'll work on during the off season. So. You know, obviously this is only like what our fourth show back. Something As like you that. You see, yeah. we don't have we all have our stats either. we have four more shows left um, for the regular season. Then we'll probably take a two week break, come back and do a show. Me and you've got to discuss topics for off season shows. We've already got a super draft one. We'll have probably one or two other off-season ones. We want to do one with the supporters groups, the Surge, EB, TA. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited to see yeah. a refreshing uh, nothing against the other two supporters group, but it's always good to have yep. a new one come in um, as well. That just helps add to our fan base. We want to get a show together with Dynamo Fans for Change with a couple of their guys, just talk about the off-season, talk about the season in general, pretty much what we we're going to also do with the supporters groups. Um, but we'll we'll get all that squared away. Uh, but, guys, it's... It, Great to be back. Yeah. Um, yeah this is, what a show. Good show. Yeah, it feels good. Um, hopefully no more storms like that last week. Right. Yeah, so. I'd be okay with a snowstorm. <laughs> I would like some colder, you know. I, just, miss, I, I mean, miss the it. breezes haven't been bad. No. You know? I mean, it's um, – but today, man, it was – But just, thanks, guys. Uh, look for the podcast. It should be up tomorrow. I am off of work, so it will probably be up early. So – uh, I think yeah. that will yeah. do it. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Uh, this is the Peel Out. Yeah, peel Out, guys. Forever Appreciate Orange. Y'all. Forever Orange.